Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to chapel as we continue our journey through this season of Easter, starting out with that great greeting from one Christian to another as we celebrate the good gifts of God. And here we are in his house to worship him, to receive the strengthening of our faith and the good news from his word that he brings to us each day. And so as we gather, we remember again our baptism. And so we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's word to us today is the first reading for this past weekend from Acts chapter 2. It reads like this. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. And awe came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, you hear that reading, and if you didn't know that it was from the Bible, and you just read it as a story, you might say, it almost sounds like something you might find at the end of a Hallmark movie, isn't it? Or some of the Disney movies. And if that were the end of one of those types of movies, there might be that last screenshot that would have these words. And so let's see if you can finish this uh, sentence. And they all lived happily ever after. It's, doesn't it, isn't that what it sounds like? You know, man, they are like together, they're doing things, they're worshiping, they're, they're loving each other. What an ideal setting as the church is born on that first Christian Pentecost day. But we also know the reality that chapter 2 is not the end of the book of Acts. There's another 26 chapters to come. And in it we see trouble in the family, in the church. We see Christians persecuted, stoned, beaten, put to death. Well, what led up to this, though? What, what led up to all this joy that we're reading about in this text? Well, let's back up a little bit to the beginning of Acts chapter 2, really that great Pentecost chapter, if you will, where Jesus promised to send the Holy Spirit is fulfilled. And indeed, the, the apostles are filled with the Spirit, and they go out proclaiming the good news of Jesus, and Peter gets up and, and gives this powerful message a powerful message of both law and gospel, a call to repentance, a, a condemning for sin, a pointing out of their sin. You know, last Friday, Dr. Moldenhauer preached on that very text, and he emphasized these words, that they, they were cut to the heart. The law did exactly what it should do. The law did exactly what it should do. It cut them to the heart, and drove them to repentance. They asked the natural question, what shall we do? While Peter had those powerful words, he made it very clear. He said to them, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? For the forgiveness of sins. You know, if we stop and think about it, though, those aren't the only folks that need to, needed to repent. While it was they who just less than two months earlier had cried out, had shouted out to Pilate, crucify him, we could just as well have been in that crowd because it's our sins also that nailed him to that tree. He died because of us. 
And when we realize that fact, when we look at the reality of our lives and how we stack up against God's law, God's command, God's justice, what can we say but, God, forgive us. Sometimes we glance over our sin, but there's much, much that we need to call out for forgiveness. For loving things we should hate and hating things we should love, God forgive us. For speaking when we should stay silent and staying silent when we should speak, God forgive us. For closing our eyes to injustice and opening them to impurity, God forgive us. For putting you in second place and giving you second best and second guessing your promises to us, God forgive us. So here we stand, guilty and exposed, crying out for mercy. God, forgive us. Death was once the end of our story, but now it's just the beginning. You take what is broken and make it beautiful. You take what is hopeless and make it whole. You take what is stained and make it spotless. Because of you, we have a new king, a new heart, and a new life. A new status, a new power, and a new purpose. A new home, a new family, and a new future. The greatest part of our story is not what we gave up for you, but what you gave up for us. The grave is empty, the throne is occupied, and the king is coming back. So God, forgive us. And as we call out for forgiveness, God, who is faithful and just, forgives our sins, cleanses us, makes us his own. We are his, and that changes everything. You have been changed because of a God who loves you enough to give his life for you. That is our God. And it changed the people in this reading from Acts as well. As they were touched by that message of Peter that repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus for the forgiveness of sins. You'll receive the Holy Spirit, and they became the church. Well, what did that early church look like? What should it look like today? What should we look like today? Well, first of all, it tells us how they devoted themselves to the Word. Reading again from our text. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Day by day, they attended the temple together. They worshiped. They were in the word. And in it, they were strengthened. They received that forgiveness and assurance that only Christ can give. They showed love for one another. It's way too absent today. For them, it looked like this. They devoted themselves to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, to prayers. All who believed they were together breaking bread in their homes together. Every day during the school year, we gather together in this place to hear God's word, but also for that mutual encouragement, that strengthening of our faith that we can receive right here. But at a place like Concordia, you don't need to be as shy about that. Wherever you are in class, in the calf, anywhere. That love of God that we have, that we know in Christ is yours and can be shared with others. And finally, all of this moved them to generosity to all. And so they took what they had and distributing the proceeds to all as they had need. And they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God caring not just for ourselves, but for others. A mark of what it means to be this family that God created, the church. In fact, that's a great way to describe it. This is the church. Our Haven Band, again, as it was mentioned earlier, this is their last time 
that they'll be with us this school year, this academic year, finishing up. And, and we certainly thank all the students that have been part of that throughout this semester, throughout this year. We praise God for them. But they've got one more for us to sing and sing together to affirm who we are as the people of God, devoted to his word, loving one another, generous to others. So as they prepare to play, let's stand and let's sing together boldly this one more time. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil where we're made. Come set. Gracious God, what a powerful work you did that first uh, Christian Pentecost when you poured out the Holy Spirit upon your people. Hearts were touched, lives were changed for eternity. And Lord, we, we pray that that same Spirit would continue to work among us and passion us with the good news of Jesus, that we too might be devoted to the Word, love one another, and be generous in our lives to each other. Lord, we thank you for your good gifts. 
We also, Lord, lift up to you our prayers and concerns that we, your family here, have. We pray for the home congregation of one of our, stu one of our students at St. John's Lutheran Church in Dietrich, Illinois, as they mourn the passing of their pastor emeritus, Reverend Jerry Bagwell. Lord, bring comfort to that congregation, but also that most sure and certain hope that we have in the resurrection and the joy that will be ours as well. Gracious God, we also pray with our staff member, Mitch Maziva, as, who is, you know, in a serious car accident and is facing a long recovery. Lord, we pray that you would provide effective treatment and, and guide the doctors and nurses and all who provide care. In all things, Lord, provide a strengthening of faith that all of us would look to you in times of trouble. And finally, Father, we also pray for the mother of student, Carissa Trunk, who's hospitalized in intensive care with a very serious medical condition. Lord, again, we pray for wisdom and guidance for all the medical professions who, professionals who care for her. We pray for strength and healing according to her will. But in all things, Lord, the sure and certain hope that we have that only you can bring in your love, both now and forever. Lord, all these things we lift up to you, and you know everything that's on our heart. In these final days of the semester, Lord, provide encouragement to our students, strength to our faculty, and love for one another. Be with us then, now and always, even as you have, for the sake of Jesus, our Savior, in whose name we pray. Amen. And as you go, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the very love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all now and forever. Amen.